Last week on Mr. President. Where's Meg? She's left here, Sam. Sir, what is this we hear about your wife? No self-respecting journalist would ask the President of the United States a question like that. Now I'll take your question. <laughs> Where's your wife? <laughs> Mr. President, Mr. President! Tomorrow evening at 8 o'clock, I will meet my wife, the First Lady, at Turlow's Restaurant in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. I never wish for anything more in my life. Me too. Again. You want to play it again, Sam? <laughs> just trying to cheer you up, Mr. President. Charlie, my wife just walked out. The only thing that would cheer me is to look up, have that door open, and in walk my sister-in-law. Sam, oh, Sam, Sam, how are you? Oh, Lord, what are you doing here? I just saw you on TV. You were just sitting here all alone. You looked so sad. And someone shot my puppy. I I just rushed right over. Are you very blue? Well, I'm all right. Uh, Charlie, you remember Lois, uh, Meg's sister? Oh, sure. Hello, Mr. Lois. Ross. Sit down. <laughs> Sam, I can't tell you how sick this whole thing is made. You can eat those fries. <laughs> so you saw me on TV, huh? You know, these are really quite good. Of course, they're rather cold. Now, I, I don't want you blaming yourself. Excuse me? About Meg. Oh. I mean, I know you and I know Meg. Well, I've known Meg uh, ever since I was born. And, you know, she's always been willful. She's got selfish. She's spoiled. I never thought she deserved you, ever. Well, I've, I've, I've told you that before. Well, you never said that. Oh. Well, I, I meant to. <laughs> I probably didn't because uh, you always seem so... Uh, well, I don't know. What's the word? Happy. You know, I live three blocks from here, and I never come in here. Never. How are the kids? Well, as well as could be expected. I don't know. I'm a little worried about them. You know, I could come and stay for a few days. Oh, I couldn't ask you to do that. Oh, you didn't. I volunteered. <laughs> oh, was I being pushy? Maybe I was being pushy. <laughs> was I being pushy? Uh, well... Oh, I was. I was being pushy. I'm sorry. Never mind. No, I'm lost, really. <gasps> you don't want me in the White House. I'm just getting away. Well, it's pretty big, you know. <laughs> I wouldn't fit in. I won't come. Oh, don't say that. Oh, you mean that? I mean what? What you just said. Um, uh, well, sure. <laughs> well, all right. That's settled, then. <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. Wilde. Right. <laughs> Charlie. Yeah. Did I just invite my sister-in-law to the White House? Who knows? <laughs> Meg's leaving as devastating as presidency. We have to tell him. Oh, sure we do. You guys keep saying we. I don't know why you're so scared. He's just the president. Well, he makes me nervous, and I, I wind up saying these incredibly stupid things. Well, gentlemen, how's the world going? All right, we'll just proceed the way we discussed. I believe it's very good. Yeah. Well, I suspected it wasn't great. Well, Charlie, isn't anyone going to tell his president what's going on out there? Sir, the stock market uh, experienced a slight plummet. 78 points. <laughs> but so far, uh, nobody's jumping out of buildings or anything. <laughs> <laughs> Brian? Yes, sir. Speak. 
Well, uh, the polls are down a bit. A bit? A lot. A lot? Catastrophically. <laughs> hey, offhand, sir, I'd say it's probably just a hula hoopism. A what? A hula who, uh, <laughs> you know, a, a, sh a short-lived thing like a fad. <sighs> Never say that again. No, sir. Uh, Justin hmm? has something that he wants to mention. Uh... Well, sir, there, there's been a, uh, there's been some name calling overseas, uh, but I wouldn't pay any attention to it. Name calling? What kind of name call? Actually, sir, it was childish. Just forget I mentioned. Who's it. calling me? Now? It's the Russians, isn't it? Honestly, sir, you. Oh, no, no, it's it's Gaddafi. He's a, what's that son of a bitch calling me now? Actually, it's it's the French, sir. The French? They're calling you a uh, cuckold, sir. Brian, get me the French. All of them. <laughs> get me the French now. Yeah, uh, could you get me some French people for the president to talk to? Charlie. Uh, get me President Laclo right away, please. What time is it over there now? Uh, it's a little after three, sir. Mm -hmm. He's probably out in some cafe with his mistress, getting sloshed on cheap Beaujolais. <laughs> Being rude to the tourists. One moment, Monsieur President. He's on. Listen to me, you twerp. I suppose, <laughs> sir. What's all this about uh, you calling me names? I'll have you know that I'm one of the boys that helped pull your chestnuts out of the fire. <laughs> Miss President, I'm talking about World War Durr, my friend. <laughs> I give you back your country, and now you call me names. Well, I got some names for you. What about uh, Marshal Patin? Huh? What about Marginal Line? What about that? Ah. He hung up. Well, good. I guess I told him. <laughs> Actually, sir, he doesn't speak a word of English. <laughs> I don't care about foreign reaction. I don't care about the stock market. I don't even care if this means that I'm going to be a one-term president. You know why? Because it means I'll be able to do something that no president has been able to do for years. Govern. I'm free to leave this country where I think it ought to go. Political considerations be damned. Mr. President, your sister-in-law has arrived. She wants to know if she can stick her head in. Now? Oh, oh hello. Oh, Sam. Oh, I didn't interrupt anything, did I? You weren't uh, arm twisting or jaw boning or pork barreling in here, were you? <laughs> Lois. <laughs> what, what is it, Lois? Oh, excuse me. It's just, it, it really is oval, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> That's why they call it the oval office. Uh, did you have something you wanted to ask? Yes, 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 yes. Just one tiny thing, and then I'll just get out of here. As it's such a small, insignificant thing, I hate to bother you with it, but it's just that um, I was thinking about it all morning morning on the plane ride here. I couldn't read, I couldn't nap. What is it, Lois? The lovely gentlemen who are carrying the luggage to my room. Do I tip them? No. That's all taken care of. That's why we have the deficit. All right. Well, I'm so sorry to have bothered you, and I'm just going to leave you all now to do whatever it was you were doing. By the way, who are you? Oh, I'm terribly sorry, Miss Gullickson. This is Brian Sawyer, my press secretary, special counsel Justin Leeds, and of course you know Charlie. Oh, yes, yes. Well, I just think you're all doing just a wonderful job. I had a window seat on the plane, and the country looks beautiful. Oh, how fine, Lois. So see you a little later? I'm going now. Goodbye. Oh, now. Sam, if I wanted to give the nice man a little something extra, would that be okay? It really isn't necessary, dear. Right, just checking. <laughs> Kids are crazy about her. Well, now, where were we? Let's get back to business here. Well, we have to figure out how this situation is going to affect the summit. Yes, what is it? Oh, hello, Lois. No, no, we, we weren't talking about anything important, really. Well, well, just one second, and I'll check. Any of you fellows have two fives for a ten? Well, that was such a lovely meal. Hmm. Um, Sam? No tip. Exciting to be in the White House. You do get such a sense of history in every room. Almost takes your breath away, doesn't it? I'm just so excited to see the two of you again. And Cynthia, you are becoming such a beauty. Isn't she, though? Oh, you guys. <laughs> Nicholas, I've been meaning to ask you this all evening. Is that stubble I see on your chin 
At last, somebody noticed. <laughs> Listen, uh, Charlie and I have got some things to discuss. Why don't you kids uh, give Aunt Lois a tour of the White House? Okay. Oh, great idea. <clears throat> I've missed you two so much. Now, I'm counting on you two to show me all the sights. I am so glad you're here. I'm having a problem with my new boyfriend. Oh, he's not your boyfriend. Yeah, well, that's the problem. <laughs> I see what you mean about Lois and the kids. Yeah, they've always loved Lois. You forgive me for saying it, but I can't help noticing that you don't share their enthusiasm. I don't know. She's always seemed uncomfortable around me. I, I like her. She's a terrific person, but there always seems to be a, a kind of awkward feeling between us. All the time I was governor, I can't once remember her setting foot in the mansion. I never could figure that out. I wonder why she wanted to come here now, then. Well, out of concern for the children, uh, I think. What do you want to ask me, Charlie? Well, sir, there is one aspect of Meg's leaving that we have not addressed. What's that? I hate to be the one to bring this up. But the social responsibilities of the presence here are enormous. You're going to need someone to take the place of the First Lady as your official hostess. Well, who do you suggest? Well, my first thought was Cynthia. Oh, yeah, great idea. She'd make a perfect First Lady. She'd have Margaret Thatcher up in her room. They could discuss boys. <laughs> well, what about Jennifer, then? What could be more suitable than having your eldest daughter take over the first lady's duty? Well, the only problem with Jennifer is she's married to Fred. And the only problem with Fred is he's a jerk. <laughs> well, then that leaves your sister-in-law. I can't ask Lois. I just told you about me and Lois. Besides, she has her own life. Well, those are my only three candidates. <clears throat> God, how did everything go so wrong? Tell me about your marriage, Charlie. My, my what? Yeah. Tell me about you and Marsha. Maybe it'll help me to figure out what went wrong with Meg and me. Well, <clears throat> what sort of things do you want me to tell you about? Oh, I don't know. Personal details, I guess. Like sex? Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How often do you two have sex? With, with each other? <laughs> I'm sorry, Sam. It, it, it just, it, this makes me a little bit nervous. Well, if you'd rather not. No, no, it's all right. How often do we have sex? I don't know. Four, five times. A month? A week. <laughs> Sometimes less. Well, do you mind my asking, where do you find the time? We make time. We always have right from the beginning. No matter what our work schedules are. We always try to carve out a little special time just for ourselves. Well, that's nice. Well, Even during the campaign. <laughs> there was nights I'd stagger in three, four in the morning. <laughs> Marsh would be waiting up, glass of brandy, fireplace lit. That's great. Thanks. I remember one time. <laughs> I think it was the first night of the convention. I dragged in at some godforsaken hour. You know where Marsha was? No idea. In the bathtub. No kidding. I remember it vividly. Small candles scattered around the room, flickering. Charlie. The scent of bath oil. Charlie. The soft whir of the video camera. Charlie. <laughs> now, do we have any other business to discuss? Yes, Mr. President. Thank God. Well, I hate to keep pushing on this, but you are going to have to make a decision about the First Lady business. Well, I suppose the only sensible choice is Jennifer. I'll have to bite the Fred bullet, and I'll ask her tomorrow. Excellent, sir. Yeah, you don't have to spend a whole Sunday with my son-in-law. You really don't like Fred, do you? Fred's all right, I suppose. If I could just sit him down on the couch, tie his hands, and stuff a gag in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you calling? Marsha, you've just given me an idea for tonight. I bet it's been great having Lois around. Oh, it's been very good for Cynthia and Nick. Yeah, and you too, Daddy. I bet she keeps you from brooding all the time. Well, it's pretty hard to brood in Lois's presence, that's true. <laughs> and, uh, sir, uh, may I add my sincerest condolences to this terrible misfortune that's befallen you? You have no idea what that means, Fred, coming from me. <laughs> You're a courageous man, sir. I just know if my Jenny ever walked out on me, I... Well, just thinking about it. I know. I know. So, Daddy, what did you want to talk to us about? 
Well, I have a kind of favor I want to ask you. Oh, sir, if there's any way we can help you through this, I well, mean, you know, anything we can do at all. Uh, it's Jennifer's help that I need really most of all. Oh, well, we think of ourselves as a team. Oh, do you? Oh, absolutely. Partners, equals. <laughs> we work in tandem, sir. <laughs> Uh, we would even consider, and, and I must say I haven't discussed this with Jennifer, uh, I am sure we could maybe even move into the White House with you, Dad. <laughs> Sir. Well, actually, that's... Well, yeah, and, and, sir, I, I, I don't mean just to uh, help out with the kids. I, I mean even if you just need somebody to pal around with. Yeah. <laughs> well, you, you know, someone to sit and chat with in the Rose Garden, have a couple of Frosties and a bag of peanuts over a ball game, <laughs> or, or even go on that uh, occasional fishing trip. Sir, just you and me and... Old Ma Nature, eh? Fred, please, you're interrupting Daddy, and we don't even know what he wants yet. Well, what I want, mostly, is for you to understand that I need a little time to be alone. Just oh, a little yeah. solitary time for reflection. So you see, Fred, <clears throat> what I need mostly is for you not to be there for me. <laughs> not to be there, sir? For me. Oh. That's a big can-do, Mr. President. <laughs> Or what? Is he ever? <laughs> so long, Dad. Right, dear. Uh, Mr. President, I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. Oh, no, uh, Jennifer and Fred just leaving, Charlie. Well, then you've discussed it. It's all arranged, Charlie. You're going to love the White House. Oh, of course they love the White House, Charlie. Everybody loves the White House. <laughs> the cradle of democracy. I thought that was Athens. <laughs> well, they'll love Athens, too. Now, you you kids be sure and send me a postcard. <laughs> Bye, darling. <laughs> Have a lovely time. <laughs> You'll talk to Lois? No, I'll talk to Lois. Come in. Aunt Lois, you have a phone call. Phone call for me? It's my mom. No, Nick and I are finished talking to her, and she wants for you to pick up. Okay. Nick? Where are you? All right, all right, <laughs> if you don't want to tell me. Well, how are you? All right. Maggie, could I ask you a question? Have you lost your mind? What is the matter with you? How could you walk out on this man? I mean, Sam of all men. Oh, come on. I mean, you don't complain to me about your life. I mean, from where I sat, it looks pretty glamorous. <laughs> I mean, I cannot pick up a newspaper without seeing a photo of you going to some opening or party or ball or something while I was at home with Mother trying to get her to stop talking to the wall outlets. <laughs> what are you talking about, I've moved right on in? What is that supposed to mean? Well, Sam is my brother-in-law. Of course, I have feelings for him. No, I don't. I respect him. I'm... No, I like Sam. I, 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 I admire him. I... All right, all right, all right, all right. I love him, okay? Uh, there, are you happy? I, I have always been in love with him. I, I used to eat my heart out every time he would come and pick you up. I cried so much at your wedding, I thought they'd have to put me on an IV. <laughs> the only reason I've ever known I had a heart inside of me is what happens to me when that man walks into the room. No, 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 he, he, he doesn't know him. He's never going to know, God. I, it, it wouldn't matter anyway, because he still loves you. Well, no, he doesn't say so. We don't talk about it. Just I can tell, that's all. Well, you should care. Or, oh, oh, so, Meg, I'm so... All right. Okay, Meg. Well, you too. Goodbye. Idiot. <laughs> Oh. 
Could I talk to you for a minute? Uh, what? Yes, of course. You're the president. <laughs> I uh, have no right to ask you what I'm about to ask you. I know that. And uh, I want you to know that I wouldn't blame you if you said no, because if I were in your shoes, that's exactly what I would do. I just want you to know that. I wanted to say that right up front. Okay. Uh, would you like to sit down for a minute? All right. <clears throat> I, uh, I would like you to come and live with us here in the White House. Don't answer yet. Just uh, let, let me finish. But, Please, uh, Lois, hear me out, and then you can answer however you like. I, I know it's a colossal thing I'm asking you, because uh, it would mean uprooting you completely from your quiet, serene life in Wisconsin and, and thrusting you right into the middle of this insane Washington lifestyle. <laughs> Because, you see, the idea is not for you just to be here to look after the kids. No, no. You would have to become my official hostess, just as if you were my wife. Oh! My God! I know. It's a terrible imposition, I know that. But I... I need someone to, well, accompany me to, to galas and state dinners. You probably have to have a... Well, we have to have a whole new wardrobe and uh, probably mean getting a, an entire new hairstyle and you'd have people fussing with you night and day. You'd never have a moment's peace. And plus, you'd probably get so sick of looking at my face, you'd learn to hate me. Uh, um, what do you think? Well, Sam, I do have my own life to lead. I give uh, piano lessons two days a week back home. I have a couple of very promising students, like one 12-year-old who may be headed for the Tchaikovsky competition. Mm. In Moscow? No, Kenosha. But it's very highly thought of. Well, I'm sure it is, and I, it was uh, insane of me to even ask you. Please, I, I wish I hadn't mentioned it. I'm sorry, I apologize. But on the other hand, Sam, I mean, if you really need help, we are a family. I guess I... Owe it to my country. Would you put that up there? Oh, sure. You mean you're really willing to do this? Well, what can I say? I guess you talked me into it. I did? You're a very persuasive man, Sam. Have you ever thought of running for public office? <laughs> <laughs> boy, oh boy, oh boy, who would have thought? <laughs> I mean, one day, you're a piano teacher in some rinky-dink town in Wisconsin, trying to teach tone-deaf rats how to hack out the Blue Danube. Next your older sister dumps the President of the United States. You run into him in some greasy spoon. He invites you to the White House for the weekend and ends up standing in your bedroom, begging you to move in and take over for the First Lady of the land. God bless America. 